If your pages don't get indexed in Google, you will never have SEO results simply because Google just can't see them. Sometimes it's like magic. You create a new SEO page and it gets indexed in Google without even doing anything. But sometimes you get this, an SEO's worst nightmare, and you just don't get in there. In this video, you're gonna learn the five steps you can never miss to make sure that your pages are ranking in Google, as well as know what to do if Google is showing you the horrible message, an SEO's worst nightmare. So let's get to it. Getting index, what does it mean? It means what you see in screen right now. It means that Google has actually found your page, crawled it, so with the Google crawler has gone in and understood all the sections of your page, saved it in this index, and is showing it in Google. As you can see right here, it's not only indexed, but it's also ranking number one with the feature snippet. That's all great, but before all that happens, you first need to get indexed. To see this, we can copy and paste this URL right here, and what you have to do is go to your Google Search Console. This is your all SEO tool from Google itself, and you can find so many things. But one of them is you click right here, inspect, and just paste that URL right there, you can see it, and it tells you it's in Google, and it's indexed. That's definitely what you wanna see, and what you don't wanna see is this right here, a URL that you have created, that you want it in Google, it's created for SEO purposes, and when you put it up here, meh, Google says it's not in Google, and it tells you why. There might be several reasons, we'll get into them now. So how can you go and check in bulk all your URLs if they are in Google, like you see here, or if they're not? To do it manually, it will take quite long, but you can actually do it with this tool right here. First, you need to find all your URLs. So to do that, the easiest way is to type your domain, like you see right here, and then sitemap.xml, or sometimes it's sitemap underscore index.xml. And then you might see different things. Depending on what CMS you use, you might see a huge list of URLs, so all of them there. And sometimes you have sub sitemaps. For example, if you use WordPress, you'll see this. So we want to see all the posts, all our blogs we've created, other in Google, other not. So what we can do is open it, and here are all our blogs. So you can get them by copy pasting, but a faster way to do that is right click and with this extension, I use it every day, it's called Scrape Similar and it's a Chrome extension. You just click it and see what's, what has identified to copy it. We only want one of the columns, so we erase one of them, scrape again, and there it is, copy to clipboard. And now we go to our lovely tool, which you can see the link right there, and it's completely free to use. So you can just paste all your URLs, make sure you delete that first part. And then you need to log in with the same Google account that you have access to the website in Google Search Console. So you click here and authorize, and you just choose the correct Google account, that's my one. And then here you need to select the website that you want to check, this is my one and then inspect URLs. It might take a few minutes, but you'll know it's done when it doesn't add new rows at the bottom. You see currently, it keeps adding more and more and more. So let's give it a few minutes. Boom, it's done. So click here to export as a CSV. There we go. And then to see all of that, just type sheets.new. It appears automatically to me because I use it every day. And then file, import. And we want to select the same file we just downloaded which should be under downloads, and it should take a few minutes, replace, or seconds, and there it is, all the data. So now you want to control A, control A two times, so this becomes blue, and add a filter. And the column we care about is this one right here, coverage status. So if it is in Google, it's gonna say submitted and index. And if it isn't, it might say something differently. So let's have a look at that. We delete the blanks, and we delete those two. So we only see the stuff. So we have the two horrible reasons that we don't like. Discovered, currently not indexed, and crawled, currently not indexed. What this means is essentially Google has found your page and is saying, sorry, we don't want it. And that's it, no reason. There's other situations, it might tell you what to do, like there could be a redirection, it could be a 404, there could be another canonical, so you can actually go and fix that. But this one is just go, piece off and figure it out. But the great thing is you're in this video and you're gonna know how to execute further and get these discovered and crawled messages to turn into submitted and indexed. So let's get indexed, shall we? You want to open these and the first thing you wanna do is one by one, go to Google Search Console, 
In the first place, we type those first two URLs and there it is, exactly the same message we saw with the tool. So it's just as easy as request indexing. Of course, this is realistic if it's just a few, like you see there, and hopefully it's just a few. But if it's a lot of them, you can perhaps skip this step because I think on average it takes like one minute per each show be too long. Boom, there it is, submitted. Let's see if that works but we're gonna do a lot of little things. So first one is this. The next one, of course, is making sure that these URLs are in your sitemap. So if you found them through this technique, we use the sitemap to find them, so they're probably there, but you might have used another technique. So to make sure that URLs are in the sitemap, first of all is you want to open that sitemap right there and then Control F and Control V to search it. And you can see it's right there. But if it's not there and you are in WordPress, there's two plugins that work really well, Yoast SEO and Rank Math. So with Yoast SEO, normally once you download that plugin and you open a specific blog, for example, this is a blog here, you will see a box right here that lets you do a few little things like adding the title and description. But what you wanna do is scroll down here under the tab advanced that is right there. And you wanna make sure that it says yes here and yes here. It would essentially mean that yes, it's in the sitemap. And not only that, it will have an index instruction rather than no index. And also here, it will mean that it has a follow instruction, not no follow. That's a topic for another video, but you want that, okay? The moment your post has these two things as yes, it will automatically appear right here in the sitemap. This one's pretty obvious, so be quick, but you obviously want to make sure that those pages are truly optimized for SEO not only the content, but even before, should you even create that page. How would you know this? With your research, you're gonna find what people search in Google. That's number one. And then all those ways that people search for a need, that they use keywords for that, you're gonna class them together. So for example, with this page, people might search, should I learn Norwegian or Swedish? Or they might search, should I learn Swedish or Norwegian? Or learning Swedish versus Norwegian? All these keywords mean the same. So they are targeted in this page. And then finally, of course, all the content has to be written with value, uniquely, and with true research done behind it. As you can see here, it's an absolute full guide. So let's say you have made sure that this page is truly valuable, but Google still just doesn't like it. The second thing you have to do is make sure that this page has internal links from strategic places. To do that, one thing you can do is grab that URL and go to Ahrefs Site Explorer, and then type it exactly right here, and put exact URL. And then in this left column, you're gonna see a lot of reports, but the one you care about is internal links. And you want to click all links. And as you can see here, this URL doesn't have any incoming links, which means that Google would not be able to find it. Google is a crawler that lands in your homepage and other pages and visits links one to another to find all the pages of your website, just like a spider would in a web, for example. And if your page doesn't have internal links, Google cannot find it. For example, one way this can be fixed is because this is a blog, we can make sure that this blog appears under the guides or blogs URL. And then that blogs URL is accessible by Google from the nav bar, right? So if we go from the home page and we make a count, to reach your page, Google would have to land in the home page, then follow the link that goes to the guides, and then let's say this is the page here, and now it's two clicks away. So we call this in SEO depth number two. So you want your pages to be at the highest depth possible and to have many different internal links. So not just this one that I've mentioned, but as you can see, this block right here also has links to other blocks right here. So there it is, the one we're talking about. So now my blog, this one right here, if I open it, is not only accessible through the layer that I've mentioned, but also accessible through other blogs. And there's one million things you can do to control your internal linking, but it's important what I said, that it has internal links, that is at the highest depth possible and at the highest frequency possible. So it has a lot of internal links. Okay, okay, Alex, that's great. I've done everything you said, but still, I see the damn discovered and crawled thing. Good news, I have some little magic SEO tricks that actually work. Sometimes Google might just work incorrectly, so let's give it a little push. So the first thing you can do is go to Google Search Console and go to the Pages report. And because they're already gonna be in the sitemap, in this toggle, you want to select all submitted pages. And then right here, you want to unclick, because these are the indexed ones, and here are the non-indexed. 
and there they are, everything I just mentioned, I do with this client, okay? So it's being executed, but still, let's open Discovered, and there's some URLs there that we want in Google. So the thing we want to do is this, this little secret button you see here, validate fixed. Okay, so you want to press that, and boom, a validation has started. As per Google's documentation, what this essentially means is that you've already done something to fix it, and it's a way to notify Google that they can go and recrawl the pages. And it's actually true because we've done everything I've mentioned before in this video. Let's say you improved the internal linking, you've added it in the sitemap, and you've improved the content. Well, let's tell Google to re-index. This works a lot of the times. Even with pages that I didn't change at all, I create it, I index it to Google, and Google doesn't want to do it. But when I go and press this, for whatever reason, it works, okay? Remember, at the end of the day, that Google is a business dealing with the whole internet. So they could have bugs and mistakes. So uh, yeah, let's do ourselves a favor and give ourselves the best chance to get indexed. However, if that doesn't work, we go to the last thing that this normally fixes things automatically, but I leave it to the end because we need to be a little careful. We're basically gonna index all URLs via API, which is the same logic of sort of notifying Google that these URLs exist and that we want them in Google. So there's one action you have to do, like you see in screen, which is creating an account in Google Cloud. And this is a little long to explain, so what I'm gonna do is add a link to the description of this video the, uh, in this guide that is just so good and I followed it uh, in the past and it works perfectly. And you can watch it until the minute 309 because after that it goes into a way of indexing via Python that we don't need because we have our super tool. But essentially it's just creating an account in the Google Cloud, setting up your permissions to do this action we're gonna do and that's it, okay? So you can watch this, it will just take three minutes and the link is in the description. So once you've done that, you will go to this URL right here, this tool that you can see right there, and all we wanna do is just paste our pages that we want in Google right here, okay? And then finally, we want to choose the API JSON file that you're gonna get once you follow the three minute steps in this video, okay? So you'll get a file that will be in your computer. So for example here, I choose the file, and there it is right there, a JSON file as you can see, so I just double click, and there it is. I'm not a robot and then we send the request. And boom, it's done. This is what you want to see, okay? If you see this thing right here, it means it worked. If you see another message that's not this, it means there's a mistake, and probably there's a mistake when you created your account uh, in Google Cloud. Maybe, you know, you didn't create it correctly, it's not the correct JSON file, you didn't give correct permission, and so on, okay? So if you follow the steps in this video without any mistakes, it should work. If it doesn't work, just let me know in the comments, okay? I'll help you personally. So, now we've done absolutely everything we can. And when I follow all these steps, the pages end up being indexed. But please, I know it's easy maybe just to go and do this thing right away. Why do the other things first if this one works? You gotta be careful, let me tell you why. This technique should only really be used as per Google's documentation for really big websites like news websites and so on. So you have to be a little bit careful using it, okay? It has happened to me in the past where some URLs were not in Google, okay? And uh, they had the crawled or the discovered. I did this, they got indexed, but then really quickly they got de-indexed again, okay? I actually stopped doing this technique and using it for a bit, but then I saw that wasn't happening anymore. So obviously I'd rather take the risk and do it than just have my URLs under discovered and crawled. But trust me when I tell you that if you do this, you're going to drastically decrease the amount of pages that land under discovered, currently not indexed, and crawled, currently not indexed. And you won't have that annoying message anymore there, you won't see it, and it will work. And by the way, remember when I told you that you need to find the correct keywords before you create a page? Go to the last video I posted in my channel to see how to do all of this using AI. So AI will do it for you. Now is your turn. Let's go.